a millennial or a younger financial consumer assumes that their data is accessible. And therefore, if they download an app, if they want certain services, they, they assume that data that they have in their incumbent institution is shared. Lenders are evolving to meet the needs of a new generation of consumers. Uh, millennials today, and I'm sure Gen Z is not too far behind. What would you say are the important characteristics of those generations, the unique needs and expectations that jo those generations will have, and how will that impact the lending community? I think it all comes to data and the ability to, to share data. Uh, data is the flip side of the lending coin. You have banks that have data because they are leviathans and, and they have internal data that they can pull. You have the tech leviathans like uh, you know, Shopify, eBay, you know, like Amazon coming in, and they have data because they, on a real-time basis, know everything that their consumers and their, their merchants are doing. Both of those can decision and accelerate things in silos. The challenge is to make data free in the midrift Right. So otherwise, you know, the fintech community really can't access data in an open, fluid fashion. Now, why I say that in the context of your question is that a millennial or a younger financial consumer assumes that their data is accessible. And therefore, if they download an app, if they want certain services, they, they assume that data that they have in their incumbent institution is shared. That's called, to some degree, obviously simplifying it, open banking, right? So the ability to have data flow, because guess what? The bank isn't at the center of the universe. As we said before, the consumer is in the center of the universe. So if I'm a consumer, I expect to be able to pull from the bank, to be able to pull from accounts, and to be able to create a new experience because I permissioned it. That's sort of, you know, along the lines of European GDPR. Essentially, I am the custodian of my own data, I get to control how it's used. Now, I know that's a simple uh, to solve, and, and a lot of people would say that from a data perspective, data is accessible. You know, you have incredible data companies like Flinx and Secure Key and others that pull data based on permission and you know, give it to third parties based on the permission of the consumer. But the, the, the bottom line is that in our country right now, we don't have the framework to facilitate and nurture that process. There's no sort of regime in place, you know, that allows for the safe and fluid movement of data. And, and until we have that, until we have a, you know, a clear mandate from the government, we have this, what I call data squeeze. You got the big Leviathans on one side, the banks on the other, and we squeeze in the middle. And yes, we use Flinks, and yes, we use Secure Key, but we need it to be more fluid. The more fluidity, and as I say, we're a continuum of lending, the more fluidity you have, the more exciting things become because now more solutions get built. And I'll give you an example. So the UK, Britain, four years ago, opened up their banking. They, they opened up what, what is called open banking, basically allowed access or mandated access to uh, incumbent FI data. And what has happened since then is that the UK has been the beneficiary of nearly half of all, uh, you know, fintech investment globally. Why? Well, it, it's it's not as you know, uh, my my buddy, uh, you know, Stephen Bombs from F Data says it, it's not that the UK is unique and it has certain tax or certain advantages for fintechs. It's because the data is open, and so now you can access it, you can build solutions, and you can service your constituents more fluidly. That's where we need to get to in Canada. I don't say it because I'm an evangelist of open banking in and of itself. I am evangelist of servicing our borrowers. And you can't make it so that the, the borrowers have to decide between working with one Leviathan on one side and another Leviathan on another. You have to make it so that they can create and uh, service their own needs and they needed to be able to shake a stick at, at a solution provider and say, I would like you to service me. And right now we don't have that regime in place and it, and it has to be in place in Canada. 
Yeah, so, so what you're saying is that the industry has evolved to recognize that the consumer is at the center of everything, not the bank itself, not the brands, um, but the consumer, and they have certain expectations and the fintechs and the banks are prepared to meet those expectations. However, they're running up against a regulatory framework that is still relatively restrictive, especially when compared to places like the UK with their open banking policies. Right. I mean, we, the, the words that keep on coming up, you know, when you talk to the Canadian, uh, you know, re regulators or, or the government is, is operational risk and reputational risk. And I get it. But you know what? The world's moved on. Yes, it, you know, there is operational risk. Yes, there is reputational risk. If you do it wrong, let's do it right. You know, so, so th that's not an excuse. You, you can't say, I don't want to use, you know, a mobile phone, so I'm going to stay at home. Like, what is that? Just look at, at like Shopify or, or, you know, that is obviously leading force in the Canadian market and, and globally. You know, they have Shopify capital. They give out and have given out, you know, over $2 billion USD, you know, to small businesses. Over the last year, it's doubled because they have the data internally to be able to decision based on uh, merchant advance data. They, they know exactly uh, what's there so that they can say on a minute by minute basis that merchant advance cash can be, uh, you know, provisioned through, you know, Shopify capital. That's fantastic. And, and, and a kudos to everything that, that Shopify has done. We need that regime in place so that a non-Shopify can access the data to provision capital as fluidly.